Welcome to the First Baptist Church of Gray. Finding Jesus and giving Jesus away is at the very core of our identity because we know that we don't come to church. We are the church and we seek to be the church to everyone around us. Here's how we are being the church this week. In less than one month, Wes Hampton will be right here in the sanctuary for an evening of music and worship. Wes is a former worship pastor and has been singing with the Gaither Vocal Band for over 15 years. He is incredibly gifted and loves the Lord dearly. We'll welcome him to Gray on February the 5th at 6 p.m. Advanced tickets for $10 can be purchased online through Realm or by calling the church office. Social distancing measures will be in place for the evening of the concert. Wednesday night meals and activities resume this week. Make your dinner reservations by Tuesday at noon by either calling the church office or posting in the official First Baptist Gray Facebook group. Awana, Student Worship, and Wednesday in the Word all begin at 6.30 p.m. this Wednesday night. Registration is now open for all 2021 summer camps. Church camp is a monumental mark on a young Christian's life, and we encourage students of all ages to consider going to camp this year. Centricid will be held June 7th through 11th at Gardner-Webb University in North Carolina and costs $280. Fuge Camp will be held June 14th through 19th at Northern Greenville University in South Carolina and also costs $280. Discounts are available for multiple campers from the same family. Sign up today in Realm to reserve your spot. Join Brian and Amanda Collins beginning February 10th at 6.30 p.m. for Financial Peace University. This nine-week class from Ramsey Plus gives Christ-centered instruction on how to eliminate debt and wisely invest for the future. If you've attended FPU and want a refresher, you are welcome to attend as well. Visit our website to get signed up. Sign-ups are now open for the Young at Heart trip to Myrtle Beach April 25th through the 28th. The Springtime Jubilee will feature many of today's Southern Gospel artists, as well as Dr. Johnny Hunt and Dr. Robert Jeffress. Those interested in going can register in Realm, calling the church office, or by going to firstbaptistgray.org slash events. If you have questions, contact Nancy Shreve, Faye Darcy, or Pastor Randy. We hope today that during worship, you see Jesus clearer than ever before. Thanks for being here. Now, let's worship the Lord together. I am bound to determine to trip and fall this morning. Good morning, everybody. It is good to see you here at First Baptist Church of Gray. On this beautiful morning, I want to uh, remind you that we are here to find Jesus and give Jesus away, that we hear and understand so much that we love him so much, that he moves us so much that we can't help but tell people the good news of Jesus. I uh, want to welcome you if you're visiting with us. I realized, that, uh, I realized this morning, you know, I haven't been doing that. I need to do that. It's important. We are glad if you're visiting with us and, and pray that you would continue, uh, continue to visit with us. And if you're joining us by live stream, we pray that you would be praying for us this morning and we'll remember to be praying for you as well. Y'all, all of our Wednesday night stuff starts back this coming Wednesday, so be ready to go. Wednesday night, we'll have Awana, we'll have our fellowship meal, we'll start at 5.15, and then Awana and prayer meeting and our youth services over in the chapel, so y'all come back. Guys, I need you to do a special prayer this week. We have a children and family ministers candidate coming to the church this this. Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday to meet with the committee to see the church for us to meet with her. Uh, Y'all pray that uh, this goes really, really well and that this is the Lord's will and that, that he would call her to First Baptist Gray because we really need one of these people <laughs> really, really bad. So y'all be praying for, uh, for the team and for her and for the uh, West Hampton concert that's coming up on February the 5th. Y'all, it's, uh, I know people are skittish about COVID. We're thinking we could get maybe 150 people in here safely, which is 
what we're looking at on Sunday morning. So if you want to come to that, please sign up. Sign up soon so that we know, uh, we know what to do. And I think that's got it for this morning. Looking forward to what the Lord is going to do in this house this morning. Y'all, let's pray together. Father, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a week. It's been another week. And Lord, uh, as we, all of our kids get started back in school and all of our teachers go back, and Lord, with all the, the hullabaloo around COVID that's going on, and we're all, we're all on edge about everything. I pray for an hour that, that you would help us to stop, that you'd give us peace for an hour, that you'd give us rest for an hour, that something in the music, something in the prayer, something in scripture, something in the word would cause us to lean back and take a deep breath and realize that you are our God and it is all going to be okay. Lord, I thank you for the sunset this morning, for the beauty of walking to the car and driving down the street and seeing the sun starting to come up. I thank you, Lord, for cold, crisp air. Thank you for a warm building to be in and for friends to be around and see. I thank you for your word. I thank you for music. I thank you for folks who volunteer each week. And I thank you, Lord, for your son that did what he did for us, that we would want to be together. Father, please, we love you. Help us to love you more. In Jesus' name, amen. I like how we ended that prayer. Help us to love you more. That's a good prayer. That's a good petition for the Lord. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Our, uh, our call to worship is based on Isaiah 40, and it's responsive. I'll start us out. Arise, shine, for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Let us praise the Lord together. The sun shall no longer be out light by day, nor will the brightness of the moon shine on us. For the Lord will be our light, and our God will be our glory. The Lord will be our everlasting light, and our days of sorrow will end. Come, let us sing to our light and salvation. We have gathered here in the name of Jesus to worship him this morning, and I hope that you will do that as scripture says in spirit and in truth.
Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave.
what a promise we have sung this morning. Singing your word is the best thing we could ever do, and your word promises that whom the Son has set free, he is free indeed, free from a life in bondage to sin. You set us free. You broke our chains on the cross. And we worship you for that this morning, Lord. We could never thank you enough. But Father, this morning as we sing and as we preach and as we pray, I pray that you could just get a glimpse of just how thankful and grateful we are. Lord, you've been so good to us. Even when it seems things are going wrong, Father, we can look to the cross and know that you have settled our debt and that you remain in control of all things. Father, you are sovereign over all things. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Y'all can be seated. If I'll join you in your sufferings, 
then I'll join you when you rise. And when you return in glory with all the angels and the saints, my heart will still be singing, my song will be the same. Oh, Christ be magnified. From the altar of my life, Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. Let His praise arise. Christ be magnified in me. Oh, Christ be magnified. From the altar of my life. not want you to be uninformed, brothers and sisters, concerning those who are asleep, so that you will not grieve like the rest who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again in the same way, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For we say this to you by a word from the Lord. That means you can trust it. We who are still alive with the Lord's coming will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the archangel's voice and with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are still alive, who are left, will be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Will you stand once more as we sing?
to God. If you were wondering about the amazing guitar work that was going on over there this morning, Jimmy Wynn's back. Uh, Jimmy had a uh, unfortunate encounter with a uh, with a um, table saw, and uh, it proved to Jimmy that it was stronger than he was. But uh, he's back, so it's good stuff. Good stuff. Um, so many things going on, so many things on our minds. It's hard to clear our minds this morning, at least it is for me. So let's, let's go to God in prayer before we get started here. Father, cares of this world are pretty heavy this morning. So many, uh, so many things want to intrude in my mind, and I'm sure it's the same with all of us. Lord, the evil one has built up a a spirit in this world that is most overwhelming to us. Father, we need you to be the Lord. We know that you are, but we, we need to see it. And I know, I know, and I apologize, but at the same time, Lord, it's really kind of hard right now. So I pray, Father, still our hearts. Be, be our Father and pull us alongside and pull us up close. Help us to hear words today that would change our hearts and our minds a little bit. I, pr I pray that someone, Lord, hearing this, whether here or live stream, would understand that they need a Savior and would trust you as Savior today. Lord, I pray for those that are, that are sick. Lord, I thank you that we don't have anybody on our hospital board right now that I'm aware of. And for Cindy and Tim Lyles, Lord, that Tim's in the hospital with COVID, we pray for Cindy and Tim, who are members here for a long time and have moved away, but still are friends. I pray that you be with them. We thank you, Lord, for what you did with Paul Melton. He should have died, and he didn't. You kept him going. And we thank you for that. We thank you that he's in rehab again. And for all, Father, for all the myriad number of people that have been sick and are sick, we, we pray your hand on them. And a realization for all of us, Lord, that if we truly believe what we say we believe, we know that if we leave this life, then we move straight into your presence. And that's not figurative. It's a real event. So help us, Father, we pray. Help us in Jesus' name. Amen. In, uh, in 1942... C.S. Lewis wrote a book called The Screwtape Letters. I imagine a number of you have read Screwtape Letters. I'm about to start reading it again as soon as I finish the book that I'm reading right now. In that book, there's a demon named Screwtape who is uh, mentoring, I guess, a younger demon by the name of Wormwood. He's assigned to a Christian. And what his, what his goal is, is not to make the Christian not a Christian. His goal is to make a Christian an ineffective Christian, to put him on the bench, to put him on the sideline. And Screwtape says this to Wormwood. It says, God wants men to be concerned with what they do. Makes sense. Our business, the demon's business, is to keep them thinking about what will happen to them. Keep them thinking about what will happen to them. You know, everybody that's ever taught me the book of Revelation, it's been presented as something that was going to happen to us or happen to the world somewhere and that we needed to sit and look for all of the signs and observe the times. Jesus didn't say that. In, in Matthew, he told us to be aware of what's going on and when you see the signs to know where you are, but to never stop living, that you keep doing your thing. 
He's, he's, Revelation, that's, that's not what Revelation is. Revelation is telling us things that must take place soon. In verse 9, which we'll get to next week, John calls us a partner, your brother and partner in tribulation, present tense. It's happening right now. It's not going to wait down the road. It's occurring right this minute. It's worse than it was. It's not as bad as it's going to be, but that's where he's at. It's here. The tribulation is here already right now. We are going to talk about things that are going to happen one day, but mostly we want to know how do we get along in what's happening right now? How do we live right now? Because, see, we've got this, we, we've, it, it didn't come to me until Thursday of this week because of something that happened. We talked about Jesus is coming soon, but it's been 2,000 years. Yeah, no. You see, Harold Cummings died on Thursday. I bet none of y'all know, or very few of you know who Mr. Harold was. He sat on the second or third pew over here in the second service. He sat with Micah and Tangie Strong and, uh, and their children. Uh, his wife, Hilda, passed away a few years back. That's how we met. He became a member of the church. Harold's just a guy. He's just a guy. Just a normal old guy. Liked being around him. Level-headed. Calm. Didn't have to worry about excitability. He's not going to complain. He's just Harold. He's just cool. On Thursday, Jesus came for Harold. It was second coming. He wasn't waiting for 2,000 more years. Second coming was for Harold on Thursday. Jesus came to him. And if Jesus doesn't come on the clouds like we hear in the book of Daniel and like we're going to hear in the book of Revelation, if he doesn't come on the clouds, he's coming for us too. So let me help you understand something. We ain't waiting. We ain't waiting 2,000 years for Jesus to come back. If I live, and this is, I mean, I've been wrestling with this because I keep saying it out loud to y'all. If I live the same age as my daddy did, I got 20 years left. Yeah, put that in your pipe and smoke it. Whoa. If you live as long as your mama or daddy did, how much time do you have left? Now, I'm hoping to walk on past where daddy was. You know what I mean? But still, daddy made it to 84. If I walk on past, what are the chances I'm going to get to 100? And like I've heard a few of my elderly friends say, I don't really want to get to 100. <laughs> Didn't I make you feel good? Isn't that great? That's why this is important, guys. That's why this is important. Jesus is coming soon. How then do we act? Revelation chapter 1, verses 4 through 8. Yeah, I just left off the first three, thought we'd just, you know, we've been there for, this is what, week number two, three for this? I don't know. Here we go. John to the seven churches that are in Asia, grace to you and peace from him who is and who was and who is to come, and from the seven spirits who are before his throne, and from Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead, and the ruler of the kings on earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood and made us a kingdom, priests to his God and Father. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming with the clouds. Every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. And all of the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Even so, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. Tribulation is here. Tribulation was here with John in the, in the Roman context that he was living in. He was in exile. Tribulation was then. Tribulation is now. It's not as bad as it's going to be, but it's worse than what it was. So what is to keep us together going and keep us from coming undone? We said grace and peace to you from him who was, who is, and who is to is to come remember us talking about that last week how john bookended that in there we use that kind of image for us that in, you know books tend to fall over unless there's something to hold us up and that's what's holding us up keeping us from falling over but john didn't simply say god the father will give us grace and peace 
he goes on and the first thing he does is he throws us this curveball where we're first thing right out of the bat from the seven spirits who are before his throne. Who are these seven spirits? Right off the bat, got a problem. Verse 4 in the book of Revelation. Who are these seven spirits? Well, guys, we've been talking, right? And you know, seven means complete, right? Who are the seven spirits? The Holy Spirit. That's the complete, the holy, the perfect Holy Spirit is who he's talking about here. And if you go back to the book of Isaiah, you'll find out, remember what we've talked about over and over and over again, there is no old Bible, there is no new Bible, there's only one Bible, and that Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. It's the revelation of Jesus all the way through. So we look back into the book of Isaiah and we find a messianic prophecy, this prophecy of Jesus for his first coming. And we hear this, it says, And the Spirit of the Lord will rest upon him. Did I skip something? No, I didn't. Good. The Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the Spirit of wisdom and understanding, the Spirit of counsel and might, the Spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. How many characteristics of the Holy Spirit did he just list there? Just take a wild guess. Somebody say the number seven. What a surprise. What a surprise. This is what he says. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's one. The spirit of wisdom, that's two. The spirit of understanding, that's three. The spirit of counsel, that's four. The spirit of might, that's five. The spirit of, no the spirit of knowledge is six. And the fear of the Lord is seven. Son of a gun. Son of a gun. So the John is thinking back on Messianic prophecy. Everything we said in John appears to be going in sevens just about because that's completion. It's all coming to an end. And here's the Holy Spirit who manifests himself, who shows himself, who works in our lives in seven different ways. Now, I'd love to take you through this step by step, but you would be asleep faster than I could say the word melatonin. So let's just drop out and get to a basic thing here. Do you have the Holy Spirit living in you? If you are a child of God, if you're a born again believer, do you have the Holy Spirit of God living in you? Yes, absolutely do, right? Only got one yes, so the rest of you need to come to the altar and get saved today, right? We have the Holy Spirit living in us. Now, we've talked about all this, right? Who was God the Father, who was and is and is to come? We really pushed that hard last week, and we talked about characteristics of God and the fact that He is unchangeable, right? So if the Holy Spirit is God, then He is unchangeable, right? Right? So the way he dealt with Jesus back in this, this Messianic prophecy, chapter 11 of Isaiah, is the way he will operate with us too, right? If he's unchangeable. So these seven ways that we see the Holy Spirit working with Jesus, the Holy Spirit work with us. Now, we're not going to be Jesus. We understand that. But we also understand that the Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit rests on us. He lives in us. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and understanding. And I don't know about you guys. Maybe it's because I'm studying it and y'all are hearing me preach it. But I want you to, to understand I'm under a little bit of conviction because so many times I said, oh, I'm dumb or I can't understand or I don't get it or somebody else is smarter than me and I'm envious of these guys that just got out of seminary because their seminary educations are so much better than my seminary education was because there's all this new stuff and all this. And I start, oh, you know, I'm just a poor little dumb child from Austell, Georgia, and then I read this scripture, and it says, dude, you've got the Holy Spirit living in you. You've got everything you need. Shut up. And that's kind of how God talks to me. He's probably more polite to you, but I'm a little hard-headed, and every now and then he just sort of slaps me around a little bit, and I have to hear that. The Holy Spirit rests on us. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom. The Holy Spirit gives us understanding, counsel, what we need to do and what we don't need to do. And then he gives us the strength to do us. He gives us knowledge and proper respect for God. 
So what does that look like in real life? Strangely enough, Isaiah 11, 3 and 4 tells us what it looks like in real life. It says, and the delight and his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. That means that the Holy Spirit will draw us closer and closer to him. Do you feel closer to the Lord now than you did a year ago? I believe the answer is yes. That we're growing in the Lord. One of the things this COVID thing has done for us is it certainly made us think about God a little bit more, right? I mean, really. All right, well, we're closer now than we were. So we're, our delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. We said that we don't know what to believe. We don't know who's telling the truth. We don't know who's lying to us. People say follow the science, and then you go read the science, and you find out this science says this, and this science says that. Who's lying to us? Through the power of the Holy Spirit, you and I can know who to trust because we don't judge by what we see, and we don't judge by what we hear, but we judge with righteousness because we know what's right and what's wrong. And it says, he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. Now, I don't know if you pay attention to the news like I do, because I'm kind of a junkie. I'm coming down. I, I'm on detox, you know. I've cut off a bunch of my social media, so I'm, I'm getting a little bit better. But one of the things that I hear social justice warriors screaming about all the time is equity, right? We want equality for everybody. We want equity. What did the Scripture just say that the Holy Spirit, how the Holy Spirit deals with people? He deals with people with equity. Now, here's the problem. If you deny God, then can you deal with people with equity? No, you can't. You absolutely can't. I'll go so far as to assert that we cannot treat other people as, as we treat ourselves. We can't love others as we love ourselves unless we first love the Lord with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all of your mind, and all of your strength. Because if your mind is not on the Lord, then your selfishness is going to take over because at the base of all this, we're all selfish people. We're all looking out for ourselves at our root. So if we don't have that redirected into God, there's no way in the world that we can get along with each other right the way we should. So the very thing that these people that are screaming about equity, the very thing that would guarantee that they could have equity, they reject. How are they going to have it? And on the flip side of the coin, we've got the Holy Spirit, so we should have it. And guys, this puts a big burden on us. This puts a very big burden on us because we should treat people with equity. We should treat people. Martin Luther King Day is, is tomorrow. It's easy easy guys i you know i've been around for more than a minute or two and and i understand the struggle that we went through during the civil rights era and all of that kind of stuff that that we went through in all those years it's easy to be prejudiced it doesn't take much and it doesn't just have to be black and white it can be rich and poor i have a sneaking suspicion if we had somebody nasty and dirty walk into our sanctuary and have a seat somewhere our first reaction not our final reaction but our first reaction would be whoa what do they want you say well no well then i'm the only heathen here because when i ever have have somebody come to the church office that smells and my first reaction is what does he want what is he looking for we have to be more determined than anybody else that we follow the Lord first and that we fight our prejudices that we fight our first reactions that we keep our hearts set to treat everybody equal rich poor fat skinny pretty ugly we can discriminate on all kinds of different basis Guys, we, we are required 
because the Holy Spirit is in us. And you know it because when you do it, and you probably do it every now and then, say something you shouldn't, think something you shouldn't, there's a trigger that goes off, isn't it? Yeah, that's, that's him. That's him. So that's one of the things he does. And, and keeps going to manifestation. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth, and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. We're not going to strike the earth or kill the wicked, but the word of God will. And the word of God is our defense. And the word of God is our offense. It's the foundation we stand on. Where we get into trouble is when we look at the word of God and we either ignore it or we try to make it say something that it doesn't. And that's where we get into trouble. Church in England is having trouble right now because the Church of England has suddenly decided to take a turn to the left and they're starting to find all these things in the scriptures that are allowable that the scripture definitely says is not allowable and there's one church that's trying to stand up against it right now and they don't know what they're going to do we have to stand on the truth if we step away from it we're on our own all right move on Randy. where are we at grace and peace to you from jesus christ in verses five and six john tells us some things about jesus how many is he going to tell us how many? He's going to tell us seven. Golly, y'all are catching on fast. He's going to tell us seven things about Jesus. Are you ready? Real quick. Number one, he is the faithful witness. He's a faithful witness to what? He's a faithful witness to who God is. Jesus told Philip, said, whoever has seen me has seen the Father. Well, I'm kind of unimpressed by that. I've heard it before. Yeah, well, what? 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 Let's Think about what it means. Who did Jesus hang out with? And everybody wants to say, because he was a kind of radical kind of guy, first thing everybody wants to say, well, he hung out with drunks and prostitutes. Yes, he did. He had no problem hanging out with anybody. No big deal. But the people that he hung out with most was us. He hung out with common people. He hung out with working dudes. The guys that, that were his disciples. They were hard-working fishermen except for one, and one was a corporate guy, Matthew. He worked for the state. Everybody, they're just all common people, just hanging out. His best friends, Lazarus, Mary, and Martha, they didn't live in town. They lived in Bethany. They were country folk, just normal, ordinary, everyday people. That's who Jesus hung out with. He wasn't afraid of anybody. He talked to anybody. He was as comfortable with powerful people and powerful people military people as he was with children the people he didn't like the people he didn't like the people that he fussed at the most were those people who told everybody if you'll work just a little bit harder God will love you if you follow these rules exactly like we lay them out there then God's going to love you if you do everything just right and you give the right amount of money and you do the right things, then God's going to love you. And Jesus is saying to those people, you're all a bunch of hypocrites. He just wants to hang out with regular people. Jesus said that's not how God operates. God just hangs out with folks. If Jesus is the faithful witness, then not a one of us, not a single solitary one of us, could ever think that we're not welcome to come to him because we are no matter how deep your hurt no matter how deep your shame your guilt your insecurity your paranoia your rejection your depression your grief your anger your skepticism i tried to make the list as long as i could god will sit down with you period all the time because that's who he hangs out with Second thing about Jesus, he's the firstborn of the dead. Firstborn means that they're more born. But Jesus was only the first, and that's real important, because Jesus is going to say to the church in Smyrna, you think I was a downer when we opened up this morning? What if Jesus came in here and said to us, y'all, be faithful unto death, and I'll give you a crown of righteousness. That don't sound too encouraging. Y'all be faithful unto death. You're going to die. <laughs> Hang in there. It'll be cool. Just gone. That's what he says to the church at Smyrna. Well, the best way to be confident about dying is to know that you're not going to die. That, that, 
that because Jesus went first, we will be born again. And if we are born again, if God calls on us to forfeit our earthly, earthly life, then we can do it, I put, somewhat fearlessly. Somewhat fearlessly. We really could do it fearlessly, but I'm kind of apprehensive about it, you know. This dying thing doesn't sound like a lot of fun. But, but because we have grace to you and peace from the seven spirits, the spirit of counsel and might, you know, I'm, I'm convinced that if we are called on, and I pray that none of us ever are, but if we're called on to make the ultimate sacrifice, the spirit's going to guide us and he's going to give us the power to do it. I'm starting to believe that, guys. The more I study this, the more I believe that. That when the time comes, that if you are his, you will stand up and you will say what you need to say and you will do what you need to do and you will do it courageously because the Holy Spirit of God will do that. It's not even something we need to worry about because when the time comes, the Holy Spirit will be there. Grace to you and peace from Jesus Christ, the ruler of the kings on earth. I prepared today's sermon on Thursday. And I started to write out some illustrations, and then I thought to myself, you know what, by the time we get to Sunday, all of this is going to change and something new is going to come up. And I was pretty right. I sat down uh, down Friday evening, maybe Saturday, I forget when, thought about some of the stuff that I've heard on the news. Uh, By yesterday, government leaders around the world are resigning. Angela Merkel, the uh, chairman, whatever she is, prime minister, whatever she is of Germany, who's been there for a long time, she's resigning next year. The government of Italy is collapsing right now, even as we speak. The government of the Netherlands is collapsing right now, even as we speak. The European Union is in turmoil. The uh, Great Britain's having all kinds of issues because this new strain of government has them scared absolutely to death. Uganda had an election last week, probably not a fair election, but they turned off Facebook and Twitter because they didn't want us meddling in their election. The world has gone crazy. The world's gone crazy. Absolutely nuts. For the first time in my life, first time in my life, 25,000 troops are in Washington, D.C. for an inauguration. Why does that happen? How does it happen? I have no clue what to make of all of this. It doesn't make sense except in this context. But I do want to say this to Mr. Trump and Mr. Pence and Mr. Biden and Ms. Harris and Ms. Pelosi and Mr. Schumer and Mr. McConnell and Mr. Kemp and Mr. Raffensperger. If you don't know who your boss is yet, let me introduce you. His name's Jesus. That's what the scripture just said, isn't it? He is the ruler of kings on earth. These folks are running around thinking that they're in control of everything. And they don't have the foggiest notion that there is somebody, that they're just chess pieces on his board. And that they could, he can stop them. You don't have to say it. You just think it. I don't know how all this is going to play out. But you know what I did on Thursday? I read the whole book of Revelation again, cover to cover. I know how this bad boy is going to end. I know who the boss is. I know we're going to have a ringside seat. It's going to be pretty cool when it's done. To him who loves us, that's Jesus, us regular folk, us folks who, who know we don't uh, now or never will measure up, but it doesn't matter. He loves us unconditionally without regard to our past, our present, or our future. To him who freed us from our sins by his blood, I want to teach you a Greek word. I want you to hear it because you will hear the English in this Greek word. The Greek word that's, that's for freed here is, listen, it's lusante. Lusante. Loose. To our word, that, that's the root word for our English word, loose. He looses us from our chains. He looses us from our bondage. 
We were in chains. We were bound by sin. I saw Pawn Stars the other day, and it gave me this illustration in my mind, the Houdini thing. Houdini would put on the straight jacket, they'd chain him up, they'd lock him up, they'd drop him in the ocean. That's what sin does for us, with us, chains us up, locks us up, binds us. The problem is, is when they dropped Houdini in the river, Houdini could wiggle and turn and squirm and do all this thing and get out of it. We're going to drown. Who's going to drown? We're dead. We're done. Except for the fact that Jesus Lusante, Jesus loosed us. Jesus made sure by his blood that our chains were unwrapped and unbound and that he took them to his death so that he could overcome them and set us free. He who, I forget what number it is, don't matter. Where are we at? Number six, to him who made us a kingdom. He made us a kingdom. God's all of this stuff, I know it's like, okay, one thing after another, after another, after another. I hope you're taking notes. I hope you remember some of this and take it home because these are things for you to stand on. This is truth that you can take with you that in this particular case, this is an argument, a criticism that the world makes of us that is absolutely true. It is what they say is absolutely true. We are exclusive we are absolutely exclusive christianity is exclusive you are either a christian or you are not a christian if you are a christian then you are a citizen of a different kingdom you have different rules you have different demands you have a different ruler the rules of this kingdom supersede the rules of any other kingdom. So we go to Romans 13. Y'all remember I studied Romans 13. Romans 13 told us to give deference to the, to the laws of the land. And so we give deference to the laws of the land until the laws of the land go against the kingdom of God. And then we follow God. It's what we do. It's what we do. Scripture tells us this. To him who made us priests, to his God and Father. We probably ought to spend a sermon on each one of these. He made us priests. Priests are mediators between God and humanity. He made us priests. What does that mean? We get to walk in fancy robes and one of those stupid hats? Is that what it means? No. Priest means that he put us in a position where we have to pray for our family and our relatives and our community and our county and our state and our nation and our world that they would repent and be forgiven and be citizens of the kingdom. And then he put us in a position where we had to tell them all of that. Where we have to mediate between. We have to tell them that God sent his son to die for their sins so they could be loosed, so they could become citizens, so they could become priests just like us. Our goal for 2021 is for everybody in here to have a gospel conversation Guess where that came from? That's not something to bolster attendance. That's something that we're supposed to do. It is our job. He made us priests. We are obligated to tell people where our joy comes from and where our strength comes from and our wisdom and where our hope comes from. And it doesn't mean, don't get a knot in your gut when we talk about that, that you've got to go out and grab the cashier better still that you've got to grab the nurse in a hospital somewhere and witness to her. My wife has been witnessed to by so many people, so many different times. She's been a Christian since she was knee-high to a grasshopper, but everybody's going to grab a nurse and going to witness to the nurse. You ain't got to do that. You're not being called on to get crazy. What you're being called on to do is when the Lord leads you to share to somebody that they're talking about what's going on in their life, their problems, their this, their that, and that, and why don't you ever, then you tell them what your hope is, and that's all you do. And you might do a great job, and you might do a lousy job, but it don't matter because God could in that position, and His Holy Spirit's going to take care of the business. You just do it because He made us priests what he did to him who has done these seven things i'll finish to him who has done these seven things to him be the glory and dominion forever 
and ever. Amen. He finishes with worship. With worship. This is why we worship. This is how we worship. We've been changed. We've been made new. We have a hope that we can be more than we were yesterday. We have a hope that when we are called on to testify on Jesus' behalf, we will stand. We have peace because of his grace. And when we get it, we worship. Worship is our war cry. Worship is our shout of defiance to the world. We stand for Jesus no matter what you say. No matter what the problem is, no matter what you say about us, we stand for Jesus. Worship is our strength. It's our declaration of independence. It's our pledge of allegiance. It is throwing down the gauntlet in the face of Satan and all of his minions and saying, I belong to the one who was and is and who forever will be to the seven spirits saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. I stand on the rock. I'm held secure by his power. I belong to the Lord, so bring it. One of the coolest scenes in all the movies I've ever seen is The Matrix. You all know it? It's one of my, one of my movies. And in that scene... When Neo is there and Smith is going to take him on, he does all of his little stuff. And then when he finally gets in position, he goes, I love that. That's the coolest thing in the whole wide world. Bring it, baby. Bring it. Because I am going to take you out. That's what this says. Bring it. Bring it. Because I'm not fighting the battle. He's fighting the battle for me. Ephesians 6 is true. For this reason, take up the full armor of God so that you may be able to stand your ground on the evil day and having done everything to stand. Worship is our battle cry. Last of uh, verse 7. Behold, he is coming with the clouds and every eye will see him. Even those who pierced him and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of him. Let's just finish this real quick. We've heard it before, Daniel 7, 13, I saw in the night visions, behold, the clouds of heaven, there came one like the Son of Man. If you were here, you heard that. On that day, he says, everybody will see him and all the tribes of the earth will wail on account of it, but not for the reason we think they're going to wail. We think they're going to wail because, oh, woe is me, I'm undone, here's the mighty God, Jesus coming back. That's not the reason they're going to wail. They'll know in that moment that they were wrong. They will know in that moment that Jesus is the Son of God who takes away the sins of the world. They will know that he was crucified. They'll know that he had nails in his hands and his feet, that he had a crown of thorns on his head. They will know that it was all unjust and unfair. They're going to know that the spear was in his side, that he did die for the sins of all humanity. They're going to wail in grief at his suffering. It's kind of weird. They're going to wail in grief at his suffering. They're going to feel sorry for him. They're going to know that it was unjust, that it was not right. They're going to despise the injustice and the wrong that he endured. How are they going to do that? These evil people, how are they going to do that? Well, doggone, Zechariah chapter 12, back in the Old Testament again. And I will pour out on the house of David and the inhabitants of Jerusalem a spirit of grace and pleas for mercy so that when they look on me, on him whom they have pierced, that's Jesus, they shall mourn for him as one mourns for an only child and weep bitterly over him as one weeps over a firstborn. Everybody on the planet will weep because of what happened to Jesus. They're going to recognize who he is. They're going to mourn over him. They're going to mourn broken-hearted tears over him but it'll be too late for a lot of people the gates of the kingdom will be closed the door of the ark will be closed and all that's going to matter in that moment is which side of the door are you on which side of the door are you on let's pray Father, I thank you for your word. I thank you for the power in your word. I thank you, Lord, that the more I read it, the more confident I am that you are going to cause me to stand. 
And the more confident I am in your church, Lord, that you're going to cause them to stand. In this, in this time when so many seem to be falling away because of what's going on around us, your word reassures us that your kingdom will forever stand, that there will always be a remnant, and that you will give them power. Thank you, Father. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This morning, what side of the door are you on? If you've never trusted Jesus as your Savior, you're on the wrong side of the door. So Randy, mm, they know. You know what you need to do. You are here this morning. The Holy Spirit's working in your heart, telling you what you need to do. Follow the Spirit. Trust Jesus as your Savior. Tell somebody, tell me, tell somebody this morning that you want to follow Jesus. And church, I hope you're getting encouragement out of this like I am. You can do this. No matter how hard the times get, you can do this because God's going to make you do it. He will see you through. He is worthy of our worship. Y'all, let's stand together as we sing.
please. Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather here in your house this morning, Lord, to worship you and to study your word. Lord, I pray that you give us strength and courage to share Jesus with someone we come across this week. And I pray especially for the, uh, the people in our community who are struggling with uh, sickness right now, Lord, especially with COVID. And be with those families who've lost loved ones and provide them some healing and some comfort. In Christ's name I pray. Amen.